Photographs were inspired originally by uh, the journey of Pythias. Um, he was a Greek explorer from the 4th century BC who travelled uh, in around 325 BC uh, from Marseille in the Mediterranean, uh, probably around the south coast of Spain or across France into the Bay of Biscay into the Atlantic Ocean. Um, he also circumnavigated Britain and eventually re reached uh, this place, this mythical place, Ultima Thule in the far north, uh, which is thought to be Iceland. Um, and that was the source of my uh, initial inspiration for the project. Ultima Thule is a, a, a phrase that, that was coined about 2,000 years ago um, uh, for a place in the mythical north, a place beyond the edge of the known world, really. Um, uh, and it's a place beyond civilization. Uh, so there's no particular place uh, that is Ultima Thule. It's thought to be Iceland uh, by lots of people, but um, there are all sorts of other candidates for it as well. Um, so it's, it's more about a place that's beyond the horizon, a place that's over the edge of the known world. Uh, this photograph um, was the beginning of the project. Uh, it's the first picture in the series. Um, and in the photographs, I didn't want to make an exact replica of uh, Pythias's journey, so I didn't replicate every point that he, he stopped at. Uh, but this is, I think, probably the furthest point north that Pythias would have reached. Uh, so I'm standing um, on the edge of the Arctic Circle, inside the Arctic Circle, uh, in a place called Grimshay, off the northern coast of Iceland, uh, looking towards the North Pole, looking north uh, from the Arctic Circle. Uh, so this was the starting point of my project, uh, the end of his journey, the furthest point north on his journey. This picture is paired with the first picture uh, in the series, um, again taken from the edge of the Arctic Circle. Uh, looking south this time towards Iceland. Uh, so it's what, what I imagine is the return of Pythias from the far north. It's the point um, after he reached the furthest point north that he began travelling southwards. Uh, so these two pictures begin, the, begin this series and from that point on the photographs go in to the centre of the Icelandic landscape. Um, the, ca the camera that I use is a, a, a 10 by 8 inch uh, Gandolfi field camera. Uh, so the, the negative is very large. Uh, uh, full 10 inches by 8 inches, so the amount of detail that that records is, is immense. Uh, and it, it kind of is modelled almost on a 19th century, it's a con continuation of 19th century practices really. Um, that, that, that kind of technical uh, method is something that 19th century photographers of exploration would have, would have, would have used. You know, it's a very similar way of working. Uh, my pictures are in, happen to be in colour, uh, and, and, but I'm still working with those techniques. Uh, so. Uh, photographing these places, especially the glacier, um, links in some ways to those kind of 19th century um, ideas about what ice and, and, and the ideas of ice ages kind of enveloping the world, the idea of the sublime, of the danger of nature, of wilderness, um, uh, becomes an element in the work. Um, obviously in the 21st century we have a very different perception of what that wildness is, what the sublime means, because none of these places feel quite as wild anymore. Uh, so wilderness, true wilderness is not, is not really what I was seeking. Um, it's, it's, it's that wilderness but with a contemporary uh, viewpoint. This one? Yeah. So it's, yeah. so it's, it's trap level kind of fissure yeah. than that? Uh, the photographs are deliberately presented at very large scale. Uh, they're about a metre and a half wide, 60 by 50 inches, uh, which is very big and it's a big print. Uh, but what the 10.8 negative allows is, is an enormous amount of detail in the photograph which allows the viewer to almost enter into it and, and study those kind of geological processes, those surfaces, uh, with a kind of forensic scrutiny um, and exactness that's uh, only available through that kind of large, large scale. Like many people, I'm, I'm really interested in volcanoes and in uh, glaciers, uh, of all these kind of geological uh, phenomenon. Uh, and, and Iceland is a place where all of those things are very evident. You know, they're available, they're there. Uh, you can see the earth creating itself in front of you. It's an incredible place to make pictures. Um, almost overwhelming, really. In, in Iceland, um, you can observe the earth creating itself. Um, there's, there's a wealth of geological uh, uh, and tectonic activity within Iceland. Um, Iceland has been created because it spreads across the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, uh, where the European and the American tectonic plates are separating. Uh, so through the separation of those tectonic plates, volcanic fissures emerge and in some of the photographs that were made in Krafla uh, in Iceland you can see that fissure separating uh, so the European and American tectonic plates moving apart uh, and it was those processes of those geological processes of volcanism of tectonics um, and of glaciation that really interested me the idea that this is the youngest place on earth this is one of the youngest and rawest places uh, on earth. Some of the places that I photographed in Iceland are um, 
uh, places of, of rich geological act activity of, of the Earth creating itself, which almost feels like I'm uh, traveling back in time to the very beginnings of the Earth, the Earth making itself. So in some senses, I'm in ancient history, but I'm also stood in a 21st century landscape, which is the nearest equivalent to Mars on Earth. Um, and some of these sites were used by astronauts to train for the moon landings in the 1960s. So there's a bridge between ancient history and contemporary interplanetary exploration. Um, and this links again with the journey of Pythias uh, in the 4th century BC. So there's, a, there's a, a world of kind of uh, things mixed together in the photographs. Uh, this is an image that I made in the, in the winter in Iceland, in the, uh, uh, the second trip I made in, in midwinter, uh, where things were much more bleak and, and cold and difficult, actually. Uh, and I made a series of pictures of ice, um, of, the, of glaciation. I was looking at uh, processes of glaciation. And obviously, uh, in our contemporary environment, we're worried about the melting of the ice and so on. Uh, so there's a whole series of pictures in the exhibition which go from the immensity of the glacial expanse um, through to points of fragmentation of blocks of ice kind of falling off the end of the glacier and being swept out into the ocean and gradually melting. Uh, and these pieces of ice are 2,000, two, two and a half thousand years old, uh, layered with uh, rich layers of volcanic ash and so on. Uh, so incredible colours and uh, textures and, and uh, an amazing surface to photograph. Um, and so eventually these fragments uh, break up and go to these kind of small pieces of ice which eventually disappear and they end their life at that point.